Hello again, everybody, and welcome back. Uh, this is our Sunday School lesson for July the 10th. And as always, we'll be using the Gospel Project as our primary text, but our scriptural text uh, will be from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 17, as we'll be looking at a lot of different passages there in 1 Samuel 17. And it's one of the most famous stories in all the Bible. And whether you grew up in church or didn't grow up in church, the story of David and Goliath, almost everybody knows the story. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. I may put a little different focus on it, I guess would be a good way to say that. Uh, but anyway, uh, we'll get to that here in a minute. And like we always do, we'll start with prayer requests and uh, I would remind you to keep Josh and Richard Coleman in your prayers as the loss of Kathy here uh, a week or so ago. And uh, so if you'll continue to remember them, remember our country, as we've just celebrated the our independence on the 4th of July. And uh, as always, that seems to have a little controversy with some people, but just just pray for our nation, pray for our nation's leaders as as Christians, the, the Bible teaches us to pray for those folks. So pray for them. And I know you have uh, personal things in your life that you would like to bring to mind. So if you will do that now and if you will join me in prayer. Amen. All right. So, 1 Samuel chapter 17. Now, the last time we looked, we saw that David was being anointed by Samuel under the direction of the Lord to anoint David as the next king of Israel. So, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him to empower him. The Spirit of the Lord left Saul, the current king. Now, I, get, I need to give you some, a little bit of perspective here. David was about 10 to 12 years old, most Bible scholars think, when he was anointed. As we get to the story of David and Goliath, most of those Bible scholars think that David is between 15 and 17 years old now. So he's a teenager. He... he is close to being his full height. He just hasn't matured in what we would call today he got his man strength yet. So he's just a teenage boy. Matter of fact, he's too young to actually serve in Israel's army. Okay? But here's what I want us to focus on today. Because most of us will know the story and, and it, and I'll maybe give you some little information about that you didn't know. But what I want you to focus on is when you face a Goliath in your life, whether it is something that you have blown up in your mind, it is a Goliath to you, or maybe the world tells you, you know, this is big, this is overwhelming. When you face that, what do you do? How do you react? So I'm going to try to show different reactions when, when folks came face to face with Goliath. So how do we as Christians, God's people, how do we react when we come face to face with our personal Goliaths? And again, whether it's, it's something we have built up in, in our minds or whether the world is telling us, hey, this is big, this is overwhelming. Okay? So, I guess where we're going to start, okay, as you know, actually, I'm just going to kind of skip around. Uh, look at verse 3 there in chapter 17. The Philistine stood on on a mountain on one side, Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them, okay? 
So here, here it is. You're face to face. Got to make a decision. Israel had to make a decision. They've been fighting the Philistines forever. There's a valley between them separating them to kind of slow down this battle here. Okay? Neither side right now really doing much. Just kind of a face-off. So here you are, face-to-face -face with your Goliath. What are you going to do? Okay? All right, so go down to, I guess it's, I want to look at verse 10. And the Philistines said, this is Goliath, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Uh, give me a man that we may fight together. Okay? When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. All right, so the first group I want to talk about are how they handled uh, Goliath. Goliath came out, called them out. Now, Goliath, understand, was literally about nine feet tall. He was a man of war his whole life. He was huge, so very intimidating, very overwhelming. And I don't want to downplay our Goliaths in our life, but to us, they're nine feet tall. They're huge. They're overwhelming. Now, Saul is supposed to be the military and the spiritual leader of the nation of Israel. And it says right here that when the armies and Saul heard his words, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. I think that's probably a natural reaction. We get dismayed. And we get afraid. What people are going to think, what are we going to do, we see no end in sight. Now, I did have a question here. Why did Saul not go out and fight him? We've read where Saul was a foot taller than everybody else in Israel. He was also a man of war. He's supposed to be the leader. Why did Saul not go out? I have a thought on that. I think his fear. He was afraid. So he didn't go. He didn't go fight the battle before him. And I think that happens to us a lot of times too. Our fear, whether real or imagined, keeps us from doing the things that we need to do. Okay? All right, so go down. Let's see. Uh, look there at verse 14. You see, David was the youngest. He was, wasn't old enough. We've talked about that. He was back. He was tending the sheep. All of those things. Okay? All right, so now at verse 16. And the Philistines drew near and pres. And the Philistine drew near and presented himself 40 days, morning and evening. So every day, here came Goliath, taunting. And I will say this, in the climate that we live in now, Christians being taunted, God's people being taunted, is something that I think all of us will have to deal with from time to time. Verse 17, Then Jesse said to his son David, Take now for your brothers an ephah for this dried grain and these ten loaves and run to your brothers at the camp. It was not unusual for when a battle was fought, if the resources around were running out, that the families that were behind would, would send resources up to, to feed the army. So that was not unusual. Okay? So, verse 20. So David rose early in the morning. So David is going out to fulfill his task at hand, and he did it early. He didn't put it off. Okay? All right, now look down there at verse 22. And David left his supplies in the hand of the supply keeper, ran to the army, and came and greeted his brother. So David wanted to see what all this was about, why the army of God, the army of Israel, was what was the deal here? Okay? Then as he talked with them, there was the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistines, and he spoke according to the same words, so David heard them. So when David was up there, Goliath came, started taunting the, na the armies of Israel, and David got to see Goliath face to face. Now, 
I stop there for a second because when we encounter our Goliaths, whatever they are, we see it face to face. There comes that moment of decision what we're going to do. We saw what the army and Saul did. They were dismayed. I get that. They were they had fear. I get that. But what they didn't do, they didn't do anything. They cowered in their fear. They had paralysis by analysis of the situation. What they failed to do was what we're going to see David did right here. Okay, verse 24. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, they fled. And that's what Goliaths do to a lot of people. They break them and they flee. Okay? Uh, they fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. Dreadfully afraid. What are they forgetting? They were forgetting all the other victories that the Lord had provided for them, just like we do. You know, if you're born again today, you can think back in your life and all the victories that the Lord has won for you along the way. And sometimes our Goliaths make us forget about those victories. Uh, look down at, I guess, 25. So the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man who's come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel. You see, that's what actually Goliaths do. They defy. Not only defy here, it says defy Israel. Israel as the children of God, they defy God themselves. You know, the Bible teaches us that We'll ne God will never put us in a situation that is too much to handle. There's, there's always an escape route. There's always a way. But what we have to do is put our faith and trust of Him. This army of Israel has forgotten that. Okay? Uh, look at verse 26 real quick. Then David spoke to the man who stood by him saying, what shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? All right, so what's David say? He said, what's the deal? We got a guy calling us out, called him uncircumcised. That means he's non-covenant. Okay. David sees that this is an opportunity. And I would challenge you today that when Goliath come before us, could we be a little dismayed? Yes. Could we have fear? Yes. Not dreadfully afraid like the armies, but this is an opportunity. Growth comes through opportunity. Spiritual growth comes through these types of opportunities. Uh, go down to verse 32. Then David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. So, complete opposite of these armies with these older men. What did teenage David do? Teenage David said, don't let anybody's heart be dismayed. Your servant, Saul, will go and fight this Philistine. So David's response to Goliath was go and fight. You know, the Bible tells us be strong, be courageous, do not fear. It's said over and over and over again. Jesus even said, don't be afraid of the world. I'm paraphrasing. Don't be afraid of the world. I've overcome the world. So in this chaotic society of us, don't be afraid. Jesus has already overcome it all. And if you're born again today, he's overcome it for you. Uh, 
let's see, that's 32, yeah, verse 33, and Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are a youth, and he is a man of war from his youth. All right, so here's the next thing about it. If we're going to fight our own Goliath, the one thing we can't do is listen to the outside noise. Here's Saul telling David, you can't do this, you can't do this. There'll be a bunch of people telling you, you can't, you can't, you can't. You know, the Bible never tells us can't. It says go. Do. You are empowered. When, the, when you're saved, the Spirit of the, the Holy Spirit comes to live in you, and you are empowered just like David. You see, Saul didn't account that David would have the Lord on his side. He just looked through the eyes of the world and he was comparing Goliath to David. Man of war, a kid. In the eyes of the world it was a mismatch. And when we look with the eyes of the world at our own Goliath, we will see it as a mismatch as well. Never forget to account for the power of the living God. Uh, verse 34. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep his father's sheep, and when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it, struck it, and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. You see, here's the next thing about battling Goliath. God's been preparing us for that moment our entire life. David was a shepherd. David had to fight lions and bears and things to keep his sheep safe. He, the world would see that, and as I sit here, we see that as a mismatch as well. But David had won victory after victory after victory over these wild beasts. And so David remembered the victory. So I challenge you today, remember the victories. Remember the victories and know you have been prepared for whatever that Goliath is. You have, God has prepared you for that moment your entire life. David's prepared, okay? Verse 30, uh, I guess that's 37. Moreover, David said, the Lord, okay? Notice he's given credit. This wasn't about David. This was about the Lord and him being defied by a uncircumcised Philistine who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine I found it very interesting the word delivered here in this verse is the exact same word in Hebrew for the delivering the lamb in verse 35. Exact same word. Could you take that that's also looking at Jesus as the lamb and being delivered off the cross to save the... Yes, you could. But it's the exact same. David is expecting the Lord to deliver him exactly the same as he delivered that lamb from their situation. The deliverance is the same. David had confidence. The next thing about battling your Goliath, have confidence. But what is the confidence in? Not in our own abilities, not in our own preparation. It's David's confidence came from the Lord. And that's where we draw our confidence and our strength. And then, 
it says, And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Unlike the armies of Israel, David was going to go. You see, to win the battle over Goliath, you've got to take some action. There's got to be something where we go. You can't sit on the sidelines and win a battle. you got to go. And David's going to go. Verse 38, So Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a bronze helmet on his head. He also clothed him with the coat of mail. David fastened his sword to his armor and tried to walk, for he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I have not tested them. So David took them off. All right? So what's the next thing about battling Goliath? You be you. Saul tried to put all of this armor and all of his tools, give him all of his stuff to go fight Goliath. Although David was probably tall enough to put it on, he wasn't bulky enough to carry it, and so he couldn't move freely. So David couldn't use the tools of Saul. You see, I said, you be you. Use your tools to fight your Goliath. You see, when you're, become, when you're born again, we all have spiritual gifts. Those are our tools to fight. And it might be teaching. It might be music. It might be that you're good with kids. It might be that you can sit with senior adults and comfort the sick or the ailing. I, I don't know what tools you have, but we have them. Use your tools, not somebody else's. Saul thought that was the best way. But it wasn't the best way for David. And other folks may tell you this is the best way, but it might not be the best way for you. You be you to fight your Goliath. Verse 40. Then he took his staff in his hand, and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook, put them in his shepherd bag, in a pouch, which he had, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near the Philistine. So what did David do? He did things that he had been prepared for. He took his tools. He took five smooth stones. I think most people think the stones are like this. They were not. They were at least tennis ball size, maybe baseball size stones. <coughs> and when he put them in the sling, slung it like that, the speed of that stone could reach upwards of a hundred miles an hour. <coughs> so David's going to use what he's good at, and that's what we do to fight our Goliaths. Use what we're good at, what we have in our tool bag, not somebody else's. So they go. Uh, Goliath taunts, talks trash. David he had so much confidence that he talked smack back to the Goliath. Okay? Look here at, uh, I guess it's verse 45. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin. You see, that was Goliath's plan. His was a worldly plan. But I come to you in the name of of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, who you have defied. So where Goliath came with a worldly plan, David came with a spiritual plan. That's what he came with. And that's the same claim that we can make when we face our Goliath. Uh, verse 46, This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. And I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcass of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air, the wild beasts of the earth, and all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. I, I found this pretty interesting. That phrase, uh, this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, it literally means that there's no escape. Okay? Okay. Literally, that's what it means, that there's no escape for you. 
that David's confidence came from the Lord God himself. And he called out his Goliath. Verse 47, Then all the assembly, what's all the assembly? That's both armies, shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord, and he, is, he will give you into our hands. That's something for us to remember, that when we face our Goliaths, we're not, we're not in it alone. David knew he wasn't in it alone, said the battle is the Lord's, and it's the same for us today. The battle is the Lord's. So it was, when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, that David hurried. He didn't back down. He didn't cower in fear. It says he hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. He's going to take his Goliath head on. Then David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone. He slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth. So he threw it, boom, hit him right there. Now I found it interesting. He hit him right there with a rock the size of at least a tennis ball going probably around 100 miles an hour, hit him, and he didn't fall backwards. He fell forward. He would never honor God by falling on his face in reverence to a holy God. But when David hit him, instead of felling backwards, he fell forward, symbolic of paying honor to a holy God. Now David didn't kill him, but I think he knocked him out, pretty much for sure. Verse 50, so David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, and struck the Philistine and killed him, but there was no sword in the hand of David. No, notice, I think that's put in there to show that how the world would have planned this is not the way victory was won, and that's the same today. Victory's not won by the world's plans or the way the world would do it. Therefore David ran and stood over the Philistine, took his sword, drew it out of its sheath and killed him and cut off his head. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. They fled back to Gath, Goliath's hometown. The Israelites chased them, killed many of them. And David had defeated Goliath because he put his faith, his trust, and his confidence in a holy God, and when we face our Goliaths today, that's the pattern we need to use, just like David. Will you pray with me? Our Father, I come to you today just thanking you, thanking you for showing us that although there are things that look insurmountable, that is just overwhelming, Faith and trust in you is greater than any Goliath we face. Father, I just pray for these folks. Thank you for them. Give them a wonderful week. And until we meet again, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great week, everybody, and I will see you next week.